Hello and welcome to this video about Unreal Engine and some components that I have created uh, for uh, our game. Uh, today I want to show you the component uh, uh, that I call Transform Tool, which is uh, based on uh, uh, what Juan Marcelo Portillo did, which is uh, a guy that created, uh, I will give you the URL of this in the description. Um, we created a UE4 runtime transformer, which is uh, basically uh, a tool to uh, modify objects uh, at runtime, so to rotate uh, objects. And I can show you briefly uh, what I mean by that. So basically, you can select an object and uh, move it, or uh, rotate it, or uh, scale it. Right? Uh, I did uh, a number of changes to this uh, plugin that he made. And um, I want to tell you which one I made and, and why, uh, and also provide you the uh, new package uh, that I have created. Uh, so the main changes that I did are uh, I changed the main class to be uh, a U object. The class that uh, uh, Yuan created was actually a pawn, and uh, a pawn is a bit of a problem because you have to actually position it somewhere physically in the world uh, and while I think it was a uh, you know a handy way uh, is not the best way and it's not the most practical so basically all the changes that I made are to ensure that uh, this code can be used in a real scenario so if you really want to implement it in uh, in your game so now the main class is a U object it means that you can just instantiate it inside your character and then uh, use it uh, so it's no more required to place it uh, uh, in the level. Uh, the third thing that I did, uh, there was uh, uh, the usage of uh, the tick function. Uh, so basically this pawn was continuously ticking and in the tick there were a number of uh, uh, adjustments for the gizmo, like the scale, the position, and everything was done in the tick. Now, as you know, uh, doing stuff in the tick is extremely heavy for performance reason and so if possible should be avoided so i moved uh, uh, the logic for adjusting the gizmo from the tick to other functions that are called only when needed so i think that is an important change and is going to simplify the uh, the code and also make performances better uh, another thing is that in the example uh, that is provided by the base uh, uh, plugin um, is uh, uh, not done with a third person example. So basically you have uh, um, a different environment which is not third person where you are interacting with the object in a very special way, different way. Uh, and this is not usually what people have in their projects. So um, I changed it so that now works with a third person example. And so probably is more similar to your game or to what you want to develop. Uh, also, I added new Gizmo examples and new Gizmo materials because in my case, I wanted the Gizmo to be a bit different. And um, I have collapsed the functionality into one main class. Now, one change that is not listed here, but I should probably add it, is that also I have uh, uh, made it not anymore a plugin. So um, originally it was, a, it was a plugin, but um, in some cases using a plugin is not that handy, you have to enable it. Uh, sometimes it's not enabled by default and when packaging may be annoying. Also, you don't have access. It is creating a different uh, intermediate directory when building. So uh, I didn't want it to have it as a plugin. I just wanted to have it as a simple class that I put in my in my project. And so it is what it is today. Um, so I collapsed everything to the uh, one main class. Also, I have removed uh, two important uh, uh, functionality that you may need. So if you if you need them, you can go back to the original if you want. But I don't think that in a real scenario they are really needed. One is the U focusable interface, which uh, uh, was basically a way to uh, flag certain object as focusable and others not. I think it should not be done with an interface, but it should be done just with your own checks. And so I think that that functionality was a bit, um, you know, overdone. Uh, and then there was a lot of networking replication code, which even if it's nice to see and it's nice to, uh, to have, uh, is definitely not the way you're going to do it in your game, unless you really want a fully real-time 
uh, movement and rotation and translation of your uh, and uh, transformation of your objects but that's very unlikely so most likely you want to have one player if you're speaking multiplayer one player to uh, rotate the object and then only when the rotation is finished to send the information to the others that actually the networking has been completed. So I did all these changes and I, and I think that now the, um, the tool uh, is much simpler, is simpler also to understand, is simpler to use. So uh, I would like to give it to you in case, uh, um, in case you want it. Ah, one other important part is that actually the tool was not released under any license. Uh, I contacted, uh, uh, Juan Marcelo and uh, I asked him if he could put it in the uh, meet license and he said yes it was already his intention to put it on open license and so now in all the source the source files there is the meet license meaning that you can uh, reuse uh, uh, this stuff as much as you want uh, and uh, in your projects okay so I can just show you the quickly the functionality uh, so the basic gizmo are uh, things like that which I found uh, a bit uh, too invasive i mean too uh, bright uh, and not so good for um, putting into a into a game so i made changes uh, some changes are also visual changes so i provided uh, uh, different uh, uh, different uh, shape like this one and, dif and another different shape like this one um, right uh, which is even more minimalistic also I provided uh, materials that are a bit darker and so they don't stand out too much compared to the uh, to that and also I have the um, I added the uh, blender files in case you want to do additional changes you know to the uh, to the rotation gizmo um, so basically how it works uh, is very is very very simple uh, the um, the UI pops up when you have an object selected uh, this is another change that I did by the way because the UI was always displayed while now is displayed only when you have an object selected and uh, uh, this part is pretty much what was in the original plugin so you can select word space or you can select uh, uh, local space and it is going to change the way you are uh, um, transforming the object you have translation you have rotation and you have uh, uh, scale right so you can change the scale of the object as you want remember you can also select uh, the corners and the corners are basically changing to uh, two directions um, yeah, this thing works uh, uh, fairly well, uh, meaning that, uh, yes, you can move on top of it. Uh, you have snapping settings. I didn't change anything here. Uh, probably for my game, this part, I will remove it. I don't need the snap setting. I don't need the actor tracing for component and actor. Um, yes, and, that, and that's it. So um, if you want to use it, I will post uh, the link in um, our uh, Patreon so if you want to access this component, uh, please go to our uh, Patreon site, which is patreon.com slash planeshift. I will put the link below uh, and you can get in and uh, get this. And I think at the moment, one other component, which is the tree view, uh, plus you can support the development of our game. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.